Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for um, your patience and thank you for uh, holding for a few minutes. Uh, we were experiencing some um, wait time due to uh, some technical issues. It seems um, since thousands, if not probably millions of people are now uh, tuning in and using um, Zoom system, uh, there are some uh, lags and uh, and glitches that you're experiencing. So thank you for your patience. Um, we are today honored to have uh, Imam Abdul Malik Mujahid, who is going to uh, address uh, a very timely and, and interesting topic. Um, and that has to do with something that everybody's talking about, um, dealing with personal hygiene, except that today we are going to be talking about it from Islamic perspective and a practice that um, was really beloved to our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a practice that we hopefully perform at least five times a day ourselves, um, and that is wudu. So we'll have Imam Mujahid uh, talk about um, these practices in a minute. Um, I am just going to quickly introduce him. Those of you who are not aware, Imam Abdul Malik Mujahid, he is the founder and president of Sound Vision, which is in Islamic uh, media and public Muslim public relations um, organization that does a lot of advocacy work as well, plus Justice for All. Justice for All has been around for about over 25 years, um, focusing on human rights uh, for minorities around the world. Um, and we do a lot of advocacy as well as media relations and public relations for uh, communities that are oppressed around the world, including Rohingya, people in Kashmir, people in Xinjiang province of China or East Turkestan, and of course now what's happening with India as well. Um, Imam Abdul Malik Mujahid is also a <clears throat> recipient of honor um, of, of you know, five, be among, being among 500 most influential Muslims around the world for several years. Um, and he has been involved in the interfaith community for over two decades. So without further ado, I would like to uh, introduce Imam Abdul Malik Mujahid and ask him to uh, share his thoughts over the next 30 minutes or so on this very critical and timely topic of wudu, wonders of wudu, and uh, personal hygiene from Islamic perspective. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Taha. Brother Taha, you are Vice President of Sound Vision. Um, and there are many things which... Uh, uh, you know about Sound Vision, but uh, of course, Adam's World is quite known, and it's known that uh, we focus on uh, younger people along with our human rights work. And uh, uh, we also run Crisis Text Line, uh, which is extremely critical. Uh, texting messages about things have gone up uh, by 45% in our office. Uh, so, Cleanliness, of course, we know is half of the iman. Tahuru uh, shatrul iman, according to hadith uh, recorded by Sahih uh, Bukhari. And uh, Alhamdulillah, in America and in Canada and many places, we're blessed with a whole lot of things. We are safe and free. Uh, while there are 71 million refugees around the world, uh, we are unable to offer Salat al Juma, but as you know, uh, Uyghur people uh, by force are not allowed to offer Salat al Juma. And uh, we have the largest concentration camps since the Nazis in China and largest number of largest uh, refugee camp uh, in the world in Bangladesh of Rohingya people from Burma. So Alhamdulillah, we need to thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This challenge which has come uh, is called pandemic. That's the word which need to be used instead of multiple names. Uh, in the last 24 hours, US cases have soared by 40%. Uh, it is fatal for 60 plus people. Our younger people are wondering where they're safe. Actually, 45% of all cases in the United States are of younger people. And, uh, and children uh, carry it themselves, although God, alhamdulillah, have safeguarded them. And may Allah they become, help them become better Muslims, better neighbors, and uh, better 
citizens than we are. They are less impacted, but they carry it uh, with them. So <laughs> things people are talking about vaccines, uh, they don't exist. And all scholars say it will take a year or two, although some tests have begun. Uh, the testing people who might have some of these symptoms, unfortunately, that testing is not quite available in many, many places and cure, cure is far, far away at this moment. Uh, the highest high level of tests actually correlates with low level of deaths. Uh, so in South Korea, they had the highest level of testing going on. It, the virus was detected first time in South Korea, the same time as it was detected in the United States. But as you can see, the lowest number of tests are in the United States, unfortunately. So, so what can be done? So prevention is the main thing. So social distancing, uh, basic hygiene, and doa, we will say. And social distancing, as you can see in this graphic, if people are around close to each other, they're breathing each other, shaking hand, talking to each other, hugging and kissing. And uh, this image uh, highlights uh, and the virus, according to research, which has been done, this exactly coronavirus 19 uh, has been tested. It can remain on air after releasing two to three minutes. So if people are close, they will get it for sure. And if it is on a surface, it can, uh, on plastic or metal surface, like handle or your cell phone or your desk, these places, it can survive for two to three days. And that's why social distancing is extremely important. Uh, that if uh, one person can give in five days to 2.5 and in 30 days, but if, uh, there is a social distance is high, as you can see in the bottom, uh, it, it slows down substantially its dissemination. That's why social distancing is very important. That's why a city where three of our sound vision staff comes from, uh, they are on lockdown and uh, they cannot get out of their homes now. And uh, China practice social distancing in very inhumane way. So they're claiming they have controlled it, but but God knows best, I don't trust them. But as you can see, first graphic at the top as compared to bottom graphics, there's a huge difference with the social distancing. And the other thing is that the hygiene, basic hygiene, keeping ourselves clean. Most of the illnesses and viruses around the world go because people are not cleaning properly. And that's why there's a United Nations program they're pushing for several years, it's called WASH program. Uh, <laughs> and, and I have been invited around the world, actually in India, not around the world, just to promote that particular program. And this is a common sense, uh, but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, will uh, wash his hands as soon as he wakes up. He will not start Badu until he washes his hand. And uh, he will wash his hand before eating and after eating. He will wash his hands before leaving for... Uh, uh, living after uh, uh, taking care of his uh, essential needs. He will even make wudu before going to bed. So washing hands were very common for him. And germs, uh, this is by United States uh, uh, Government Department of uh, uh, Health. Uh, so germs are all around us. We can see these graphics, they're everywhere. So washing hands, uh, is a way to stay healthy ourselves and washing hands is a way to, uh, uh, to get other people uh, uh, safe. So uh, washing hands often is a way to stay handy. So th this is government recommendation before, during and after preparing food, before eating food, uh, before and after carrying someone who is sick, uh, before and after treating uh, any wound uh, after uh, going to toilet. This is what government is recommending after using toilet, after changing diapers, after blowing your nose, coughing, sneezing, after touching an animal, animal feed, after handling a pet, uh, after touching garbage. So, so this is what government is recommending. And this is, they say, is proper way of doing it. 
and uh, you know taking soap and all that but see the last part the last part is the turning the tap not by your hand but by some napkins or some tissue paper but uh, something which uh, you know because that is so what i have adopted as a practice is i while i'm using my soap to wash my hand i wash uh, 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 that uh, knob as well and at the end i don't use that so now these are the steps which are recommended to wetting hand and with warm or cold water applying soap leathering is uh, of course uh, doing in this way is scrubbing it very thoroughly uh, and uh, different things government is saying now this has been part of what we do in wudu and wudu could be rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will do sometime in a faster way sometime he will take more time to make wudu and uh, this is allah has ordered uh, that for salat if you are going for salat you need to wash yourself and uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, sometime will do it only once sometime he will do each part twice and he has recommended many time to do it three times but he also want us to don't overdo it walam yasid ala salat don't do more than that because saving water then he says that uh you know wasting water is something which rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, did not appreciate so preserving water is important so salat is fard and it cannot be done unless you do wudu and it's order from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, so first step of making wudu of course with bismillah you start with your hand anything which you do in life start with your hand that's the basic bottom line of everything start with your hand if you are not washing your hand if you are not clean in that and do it thoroughly putting your hands and all around and uh, you know water need to go between your uh, nail and your flesh also so it and and take out things which may uh, interrupt your making the do and of course uh, <clears throat> rinsing your mouth immediately comes after that so so take water in your uh, mouth with clean hand of course and take your head up and gargle and swirl water all around uh, <clears throat> this is important and then you take it out and do it three times uh, you know fast we do one time but it doesn't matter uh, if you are not in rush and i hope you are not it is important to do as many time as is possible but not more than three times but if you do it once it's okay if you are in rush but in this time when people are worried about it doing it three times and why it is important look at this uh, that particular image you are you know we'll be talking about nose now uh, so your this is the you know everything is going through your head and your nose your mouth and your ears all of these things are connected and that little uh, uh throat uh, and everything is connected you know it's going downward so wudu has cleaning of all these aspects and that's why the second thing which you third thing which you do after washing hands and ears is your nose uh taking water uh in your uh, one nostril and taking as far as it can go uh and maybe uh, take your uh, head up and then blow it out so a proper cleaning and do it three times and for each nostril and uh, so take it up uh and throw it out and uh, nose and then of course your face which we touch so often often but of course you know once you take water sometimes it is difficult to close the knob but wastage of water we need to watch out watch out for so 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 take your uh, uh, water and wash your face uh, three times and uh, uh, your arms three times because they get dirty also and then uh, you do massa you take care of your head and then after you had uh, you uh, go to your ears and uh, clean them up as i showed you in the image these all openings are uh, your uh, you know in tahara and islam you clean all opening with water 
Uh, in America, it's not practiced, although some doctors emphasize that uh, all openings, you clean them uh, through water. So, and of course your feet uh, as well. So a thorough cleaning is important. Now they're taking tests uh, for this virus as other viruses. Look, uh, you know, they're stopping cars uh, in places where it's possible. It's in Belgium, this image. You see, he's putting this, uh, uh, the medical uh, staff is putting that swab in the nose and they will take all the way in. Uh, this image tells you it is going all the way in because the once the viruses go, uh, the first place they are in is this place and they multiply over there and that's science. I'm not saying that doing that is going to uh, cure if you have a virus problem or anything like that, but this is a preventive measure. What they're saying is social isolation and prevention. And, and this swab is going all the way in because that's where this stuff is. And you can see this is the guideline in doctors where to take that swab. So, so this is very important. This is on dummy, a medical professional is being trained. Uh, and this is where real swab is being taken through nose. They're gonna go all the way. So these are the areas which we are supposed to clean. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will say that people who make wudu, their face will be radiant uh, at, the, uh, at the day of uh, judgment. And uh, he also says that doing a best possible wudu for yuhsinu wudu, so the person who makes his wudu very good, Allah will forgive uh, his uh, uh, sins uh, between two salat. So wudu for us is not just a matter of hygiene. It's, wudu, it's, it's a matter of our worship. It's a matter of our ibadah. And if doing it perfectly, doing it thoroughly is, is very liberating to us from our sins. So that's the presentation and uh, we have other, uh, we'll have some quick Q&A, but there are other webinars which are coming up. There are still unfortunately some people who are offering Salat uh, in congregation and they are unsure. So uh, tomorrow I will share very thoroughly uh, what is the Islamic reasoning and argument uh, in this regard. So you can go on sanvision.call webinar and sign up for that and uh, social isolation and anxiety, Dr. Farah Islam on Saturday, and then Sunnah of giving uh, during this period on 22nd. And we may have more webinars. So sanvijan.com forward slash webinar is the way to go. And uh, in America, still test kits are not available. Test kits were provided by World Health Organization, which is a marvelous organization of United Nations. It uh, eliminated it, eradicated smallpox from around the world. And it has almost eradicated polio, but because of Afghanistan war situation, uh, it has not been completely eradicated. And some of those people pop in into Pakistan uh, through the porous border. So because of these two countries, polio is still not eradicated, but it is done throughout the world. Who did that? World Health Organization. They provided tests in February, to all 60 countries. Unfortunately, US refused and they started reinventing the wheel. Now, in, uh, wheel is reinvented, but manufacturing is taking time. So tests are not available in America. So if you go on this website, you can sign a petition about that. Then uh, there is preventive uh, personal equipment for physicians who are saving our lives. We need to save them also that's not available either. So if you go there, uh, you can uh, automatically call uh, in America's senators and congressperson that US has strategic, uh, uh, strategic, uh, uh, what they call it, strategic uh, uh, reservoir of these things. Uh, they need to release those from reservoir so doctors are protected. In Chicago, a hospital is shut down because one doctor, physician uh, has encountered not very far from where we are. And uh, we also want to know, world is changing, friends. You need to realize that. Schools in one state in America are closed for the rest of the year. 
other places for six to eight weeks. Ireland schools are closed for 16 weeks. No one know how long these things will be closed. And for the first time, uh, about five days ago, my train has about 30 people in my car, in my compartment and car. Uh, day for yesterday, six. Yesterday, three. Today, there was one more person other than myself. So people are working from home. Uh, children are at home. And in China, uh, domestic violence went up, divorces went up because people are not used to being with each other. And these things we'll be addressing, uh, I think, day after tomorrow in our conference call. But we want to know what are your needs. And this is a, if you go tinyurl.com forward slash U786, we have a survey farm which Brother Taha, our vice president, has developed. And through that, you can give us feedback. What are your needs? Because Sun Vision is about families, about parenting, about Muslim uh, life. And we want to learn from you that how do we organize what we need to do for you. So uh, last but not the least is Dua. Uh, make, asking God Almighty for yourself. Asking uh, God Almighty to keep you safe, your children safe, your elderly safe. And more you make the dua for all, more love in the family will inshallah increase. And when you are asking God Almighty for something, for safety and all that, that will also allow you uh, to pay attention to your safety. So social distance, but not distance of love, but physical distance, uh, not isolation spiritually. Uh, so connection with God Almighty and connection with humanity, with dua and service, what will inshallah help us move forward so thank you so much thank <clears throat> thank you uh, Imam Jahid, uh, for those very uh, <clears throat> very i would say brief but very practical advice um, on uh, our own personal hygiene from islamic perspective um, wudu and every other wonderful thing that comes with uh, the teachings of our prophet peace be upon him when it comes to uh, personal hygiene uh, at this point, if there are any questions, any comments, any feedback, uh, you're more than welcome to share. Uh, you can raise your hand using the tool that is there uh, as part of, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the toolbox that you see on, um, or the bar that you see is, uh, on Zoom. You can also ask questions in writing. Um, if you raise your hand, though, you can ask verbally and we can unmute you. You can ask or you can make a comment. Same with in writing, you can do that using the Q&A or question answer box or chat box as well. So we'll wait a couple of minutes. If you have any comments, thoughts, questions, we will entertain them. And if not, then we will uh, call it a day for now and we will be resuming tomorrow same time. <clears throat> On chat box, uh -huh. mm -hmm. maybe you can start putting the uh, links uh, to future yes. webinar as well as the URL for survey form and yes. test. Any comments, thoughts, questions, you're more than welcome to share with us now. Um, <clears throat> let me... Okay, so one question has come. Uh, mm -hmm. People are still going to prayers and also plan to Juma prayer. Are they breaking any laws? Any advice for them? Well, uh, if you go on soundvision.com, I have a Islamic reasoning and argument written there and it's available. And maybe Brother Taha, you can put in the chat the URL. I think it is uh, very dangerous because when uh, you, know, you look at the news in three countries, uh, Brunei, Singapore, and Malaysia, it has spread directly traced to a masjid gathering directly traced. Now three countries are under that. Number one, 
Number two, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If it is uh, some rain and uh, uh, some some mud or some storm type situation, he will modify adhan and include the word place wherever you are, pray wherever you are. In another narration, pray in your homes. And based on that, uh, historically, Juma has been suspended because of this type of situation. So it's absolutely uh, correct, but those situations were less problematic than the situation now in which people are at the danger when they perform sajda, they are very close to each other. Uh, elderly people uh, who come to masjid also are vulnerable uh, more and uh, that connection will carry. So it is very sad. A friend of mine sent Juma Mubarak uh, on last Friday uh, when I was not praying and I, st I teared up because it is part of our culture. It's part of our civilization. It's part of one occasion we all gather. So it is uh, painful, uh, but it is extremely important that people do not pray together, people do not congregate together uh, and maintain a six feet distance uh, wherever in public place or a grocery store or in a train station you go. In California, uh, in places where there is still allow to people to travel, uh, they have added extra cars to trains so people can sit six feet away from each other. Thank you. There is another question um, in the chat box. Um, are we allowed to perform wudu without water if water if we are in a situation without water? Of course, uh, if you do not have water available or you're sick and for some reason you cannot use water, you can do tehmum and uh, if uh, you just put your hand on dust and that's ritualistic. That's part uh, of the ibadah and uh, you put uh, through your face and put up to your elbows and that's your wudu uh, as a tayammum. But that is uh, not required. Uh, please confirm we can wash our feet. Uh, thereafter we can wear our socks. Uh, there we can ma uh, mask uh, the socks. Well, most scholars agree that you can uh, just uh, have some wet hand go through over your socks. Uh, and, uh, but if you can wash, you know, if you have socks uh, which you put on after making wudu, otherwise uh, you need to take out socks and wash your feet three times. But again, you wash your hands at the end again, because the main thing is to keep your hands clean and uh, your nose, your throat, and your face because you keep touching those things. Well, that's great, thank you. Any other comments, questions? I have provided all the necessary links to our articles on this topic, our article on this topic, as well as um, the survey that we want you to fill out to let us know what kind of programming we'd like to see from us over the next few weeks. And then of course, um, uh, the webinars link. Actually, I think it messed up a little bit, so I'm going to type that up again. Um, so webinars, which is soundvision.com forward slash webinar, uh, forward slash webinars. Okay, well, if there are, okay, so there is a question. Is it possible to start at 1.30 p.m.? I'm assuming 1.30 p.m. Eastern time, um, which would be 12.30 Central time. Um, so, uh, well, let me just say something quickly about that. There's another question that came after that. So at this point, we would like to remain consistent, um, at, uh, you know, given this time, because typically that's the lunch hour in Canada and America as well, more or less around that time. So we want to remain consistent for the next few weeks. Of course, if we do get more requests, for time change, we will be very happy to, uh, you know, adjust the time. So thank you for sh asking that and we'll, we'll definitely, maybe it's a good idea to do a survey at some point to figure out what is an optimal time for everybody. There's a question, Salam Imam Abdul Malik Mujahid. My question is, how Muslims will use this situation as opportunities to enhance our connection with Allah and his messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Thank you so much. Uh, you know, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through worship is important. 
and uh, you cannot have uh, you know salat and sajda is the best way to connect to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his dhikr and uh, you you do that uh, after cleaning yourself washing yourself washing is an ibadah uh, you start with bismillah rahman rahim you keep saying shahadatain ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu while making wudu and at the end or during you can say allahumma jalni min at-tawabin allahumma jalni min al-mutatahhirin ya allah make me from those people who come back to you make me from those people who thoroughly clean themselves this is the dua which you made during and after the wudu so connection with allah is important but also remember surah al-maun that connection with humanity is critical in surah al maun allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says araita alladhi yukarrib bid-din have you seen the person who denies the faith and first first set of the characteristic of that person is that person does not connect with other in service so volunteer during this time pray for other people to drop off food to help uh, do groceries for the elderly and things of this nature and second set in surah al maun is the same person is not tharo in terms of connecting with allah in worship and his lazy in standing up for salat so while we are at home designate a place as a masjid at home and uh, have quran and musallas always ready there and uh, uh, have a family halaqa each day for few minute maybe a dhikr after each salat of 3 4 minute because many time in salat uh, we are talking to allah and sometime we disappear from talking to allah thinking of something else so after that we loudly talk to each other about some hadith and children can participate you can have evening halqa make a special duas for your neighbors uh, because dua is a way of connection as well so so keep thinking about this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Uh, that was ta'inu bi sabr wa salat uh, seek help from allah in difficulty with sabr and salat and this is the time to use both of those vehicles to connect with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awesome thank you very much uh, imam jahid uh, don't think there's any other question at the moment uh, if there is anything we can definitely take it up in the next few seconds um So as we uh, conclude um just want to remind everybody once again um please find our list of webinars over the next few weeks um at soundvision.com forward slash one third sorry forward slash webinars because I'm uh multitasking here I see 130 year again so so soundvision.com forward slash webinars um we have one very important one coming tomorrow coming up tomorrow regarding Uh, making the best use and most of our uh, juma um and imam mujahid already touched on it today but we're going to actually talk more specifics tomorrow in terms of programming um secondly please make sure you continue donating to sound vision uh, please go to giving give.soundvision.com to make sure that you keep contributing keep uh, supporting sound vision all of this work that sound vision does Uh, it's only possible because you keep contributing and you keep uh, us in mind in your generous donations uh, throughout the year so um all of this free stuff that comes your way we want to keep it free inshallah and keep it going and hopefully after the survey we will start doing maybe more webinars on daily basis not just one perhaps one later on so we need your continuous support jazakum allah khairan um and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow at the same time and if uh, imam mujahid do you want to have any talk uh, say any concluding remarks at this point please do go ahead and we'll conclude with that yeah that's it thank you so much walasr inna al-insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawassaw bil-haqq wa tawassaw bis-sabr assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah assalamu alaykum thank you